What's going on everybody and I hope you had a fantastic Monday and you're enjoying your Tuesday morning so far. This is MYG Jeffy T85 here and I'm just going to give you my BKN game recap for the Brooklyn Nets as unfortunately they suffered a very very difficult defeat last night in Dallas against the Dallas Mavericks by the score of 96 to 94 and what a crazy way that this basketball game actually ended towards the end of the game. The one thing I will say about the Nets is they played hard the entire game. I thought they played hard. I thought they played tough. I thought they had pretty solid defense overall. Once again, this team did not give up 100 points against a very good Dallas, Cow uh, Dallas Mavericks offense. That's the one thing I will say. The Nets did a good job holding this team under 100 points. But... There were at times where the Nets were actually up by 14 in this game. And the Nets looked like they were going to have control of this game. At one point, they were up 25-11. to 11, And they looked like they were going to take full control of this basketball game and actually end up winning three in a row at one point. But Dallas just had too much when it came down to the end of things. And Dallas, unfortunately, and for, unfortunately for the Nets, Dallas was just too much for them in the end. So... I'd have to say right now, it's a very difficult loss last night, especially the way that it ended. Now, I will have to say, the Nets did a pretty solid job in terms of not allowing Dallas to go absolutely nuts from the three-point line, as Dallas was only 12 of 28 from the three-point line for, 40, for about 43%. They were 44% from the field. What really hurt the Nets overall, though, I'd have to say... The three-point shooting was not good. The Nets' three-point shooting overall during the game was only 10 for 29, about 35%, and they were about 44% from the field. That's what pretty much hurt them a lot during this game last night. They also got out-rebounded by seven, but I will say this. A guy like Nicholas Claxton, every single time this dude is just all over the place, near the rim, getting rebounds. Claxton actually ended up in 32 minutes having a double-double, he had three steals and a block shot, 10 rebound, 14 rebounds with 10 points, another double-double for Nicholas Claxton, though he did get in a little bit of foul trouble. So kudos there to Nicholas Claxton. He once again was proven to be a force on the boards and around the basket, playing good defense. Royce O'Neal might have had his best game overall as a Brooklyn Net. 15 points with 8 assists, 4 rebounds, and 2 steals, and 2 block shots. O'Neal was very good in 41 minutes. Though he did have a very, very, very bad turnover at the end, but I'm not going to kill him for that. I thought O'Neal played well. I would also have to say Joe Harris might have had his best game as a Brooklyn Net. I mean, he was 6 for 10 from the field, 2 for 5 from 3-point range, but he did have 5 rebounds and 4 assists, including a steal, and 14 points. I thought Harris played himself a very good game overall for the Brooklyn Nets. And then Kevin Durant had his usual Kevin Durant-style game. He was 39 minutes, 10 for 20 from the field, 1 for 3 from 3-point three range. He had 4 rebounds and 4 assists, 2 steals and 1 block shot. Though he did have five personal fouls, but 26 points. Only, uh, Durant was in foul trouble most of this game. But the Nets overall, <laughs> I thought they fought as much as they could throughout this game. They actually did a good job not turning the ball over. Dallas turned the ball over nine more times in this game compared to the Nets, where they had 22 turnovers to the Nets only five turnovers. So that's one thing that I liked. And the Nets also had more sister in this game with about 22 assists compared to Dallas's 18. Dallas's three-point shooting was just better, though. Dallas's field goal shooting was just better, too. That's the one thing that hurt the Nets. Both, actually, both teams shot 44% from the field. I just think when it came down to the clutch points of things, second-chance points, I thought Dallas did a little bit better in terms of their second-chance points. Luka Doncic was just unbelievable again. 36 points. He led all scoring during the game. He had 36 points. He had 6 rebounds and 6 assists. He also had 2 steals and a block. He also did have 5 personal fouls. And he even had 5 turnovers during this game. So Luka Doncic was like... He was great for the field in terms of scoring and helping out his teammates. But overall, the, the Dallas Mavericks were just too much for the Nets. They were. 
And it's going to come down to that last key. I want to give a shout out to, to Cam Thomas. Since this kid has gotten his opportunities to start playing, he's been a jolt of energy from that bench. He was 2 for 4 from 3 point range, seven, 5 for 13 from the field. He had 19 points overall. Cam Thomas has been a guy that has taken advantage of his opportunities when he's had those chances in the second chance. I want to say the Nets unfortunately suffered an injury during this game. As a key player to their bench, Yuta Watanabe, he unfortunately suffered an, an ankle injury. Though it looked like he was in good spirits, he suffered an ankle sprain during this game. He played in only five minutes. He did have a big three-point shot at one point during the game. But we're going to have to find out what the injury diagnosis is going to be for Yuta Watanabe and how long he potentially could be out. Though he looked like he, looked like he was in good spirits during the uh, postgame, according to Nets head coach Jock Vaughn. So, curious to see how much Watanabe might miss. But <laughs> the key sequence during this game... The Nets were down by three with about 7.3 seconds left in this game. And Kevin Durant was able to draw a foul on Dorian Finney-Smith behind the three-point line. And he had, an op he had his opportunity to go to the line and try to tie this game. But he missed the second free throw after he made the first one. And Durant had a streak of not missing any free throws. I believe he was like about 166 in a row of not missing a single free throw. And he ended up missing that second free throw. That's a killer. That's a killer with the chance to send this game into overtime. And Durant missed the second free throw. Then he missed the third one intentionally. Royce O'Neal actually got the rebound and was driving to the basket. But he turned the ball over while driving to the basket. Instead of trying to drive and draw a foul or at least put up a shot, he tried to pass the basketball out. And he ended up turning the basketball over. And then that's all she wrote. And that's why the Nets lost this game 96-94. Ben Simmons, in his return to action, he pretty much didn't do much. He was actually coming off the bench in this game. He, in 16 minutes, only had two points, two assists, and three rebounds with one steal in the game and two turnovers with three personal fouls. It's not a good look. I know Ben Simmons is coming off uh, a knee injury, but at the same time, Ben Simmons is continuing to be a problem right now for the Nets. He is not contributing enough for what the Nets need him to do on the basketball court. And Ben Simmons has got to start stepping his game up on the basketball court for this Brooklyn Nets team. Because right now, he is giving this team zero to nothing on the court. Ben Simmons has got to start helping this team out. Big time. In terms of the bench, besides Cam Thomas, nobody else on this team really gave the Nets any type of spark from in terms of scoring from the bench. Yuta Watanabe, before he got hurt, I'm going to give him an excuse. He got injured during the game. He had three points. I mean, Duke, David Duke Jr. scored nothing. Patty Mills, I, and Patty Mills has got to start doing something from the, from the bench. He can't just keep going up and throwing up no points. He had nothing in the game. Seth Curry in 16 minutes, he only had two points. Seth Curry's still coming back from injury. As well as a Ben Simmons, two points during the game. Cam Thomas was really the only spark for the Nets in terms of their bench play. I mean, their, their starters did pretty well. Durant had 26. O'Neal had 15 points during the game. Claxton had 10. Harris had 4. And Sumner, I mean, you get what you get from Edmund Sumner. He had 4 points during the game. But either way, the Nets bench really let them down. And that's where i probably say this game was lost for the Nets. And you compare that to uh, what Dallas did off their bench. Dallas had 5 points from Kleber. Tim Hardaway Jr. had 11 points. Uh, the rookie Green, Josh Green, had 16 points off the bench. Christian Wood had 6 points overall. Dwight Powell had 2 points. So, I mean, Dallas's bench, they outscored the Nets bench easily in this game. And that was another one of the big factors on why this Nets team lost. Is that the bench play of Dallas just absolutely outplayed the bench of the Nets last night. So, <laughs> the Nets, unfortunately... They suffered a very difficult loss. They could have easily won this game. They were they were up by at least 14 points at one point in this game. 
but the Dallas Mavericks did a better job in terms of their three-point shooting overall, and they did a better job in terms of getting contributions from their bench players in this game. And the Nets, unfortunately, lose this game. They dropped to 4-7 and seven on this early season, and the Nets now are going to head back home after a 2-1 and one road trip, and they're going to get ready for a home game against the New York Knicks. So it's going to be a tri-state battle between the Nets and the Knicks this coming Wednesday. I will actually be covering the game this Wednesday. It'll be on ESPN. So I'll be covering the game between the Nets and the Knicks this Wednesday on ESPN at 7.30. So the Nets are going to be 4-7, and seven, looking to try to raise the record to 5-7 and seven, going into this game against the Knicks this coming Wednesday. We'll get some injury diagnosis on what happened with Yuta Watanabe, how long he potentially might be out, and... Who might be able to fill his shoes going forward? So that's my BKN Nets recap for the Brooklyn Nets as they lose this game, unfortunately, to the Dallas Mavericks in close fashion by the score of 96 to 94. The Nets are now 4 and 7 on the season, and they will be ready to take on their tri state inner city rivals, the New York Knicks, this Wednesday to see if they can up their record of 5 and 7 on the season. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like button below. Sub up if you haven't already to NYG Jeffy T85 for more breaking news updates, injury updates, roster updates, and chatter, as well as. Brooklyn Nets game recaps surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. Turn on the bell for notifications of the next video or short they'll be dropping on the channel surrounding the Brooklyn Nets. And let me know in the comment section what you think about last night's difficult loss for the Brooklyn Nets. And if you think they'll be able to bounce back this Wednesday against the New York Knicks at Barclays Center this Wednesday. So I thank you very much, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday morning. Take it easy. And as always, let's go Brooklyn Nets. It's a Nets world. And guess what? We all just live in it.